Hi guys, today we're going to go over managing work in Limble. So to get started, first go to your location, then location dashboard, and you'll see this screen here. Now there's a lot of information or KPIs on this side, but what we want to focus on for managing work is this list here. So right off the bat, you can see all of your users, all of your teams, and anything unassigned, and all the work that's assigned to them. So it looks like Todd has a weekly PM that's due today that he hasn't gotten to yet. And there's a quarterly PM that's assigned to the manager team that's 10 days overdue. Now, this probably should warrant some action. So what we can do is actually click on quarterly PM and see why it's 10 days overdue. Now it looks like back on the 20th, Brian said that they had a delay due to an audit and then it just kind of got overlooked and no one's actually come in and actually replaced the filter. So to correct that, what I'm, first I'm gonna do is change this to a higher priority level and let's actually add a comment and say, please get to right away. And then let's go ahead and click and drag and assign that to Todd. Now it's really just that easy to, to move the work around on who it's assigned to. You just up and drag it to them, or you can click this wording over here and choose who it's going to be assigned to. Now that it's assigned to Todd, because we just assigned it to him, he will have actually received a push notification and email, if you have emails turned on, uh, on his phone. Now a push notification, for those who don't know what it is, is a little beep on your phone. If you've used Facebook, they use push notifications all the time. Basically a push notification uh, is that little beep that says someone's commented on your post. Except for in Limble, it says you have new work, or it may say uh, someone commented on work that's assigned to you. So now to show you what uh, Todd gets to look uh, gets to see on their phone, I'm going to drag the screen over here. Now, if we were in person, I'd pull out my phone, but since we're not, this will have to do. But this is what the mobile app looks like. If you haven't checked out the mobile app yet, I strongly suggest downloading it, giving it install, and seeing the functionality that it can do. And then additionally, look at uh, uh, the tutorial introduction for the mobile app for technicians. But in here, Peter can go ahead. I'm sorry, Todd can come in, look at my list of tasks and then quickly see that quarterly PM that was just assigned to him. Now Limbo is really designed to be very user friendly and mobile and really facilitate a quicker, um, quicker, more efficiency for your technicians. As you can see, it's super simple. All he has to do is open up the mobile app, go to my tasks, and there's the tasks that he needs to do. We don't want to make it crazy, um, crazy complicated for him to do. Uh, so he would come in, check out this work. You can read the comments that, that exist on this work. Go replace that filter and then document that it's done. So it checks off that he actually replaced the filter. He can add pictures, invoices, parts. Maybe he'll add a, the part that he used and then come in and actually complete it. Now in this case, let's say it took him an hour to do. Click complete and it's no longer in this list here. Now what's great is when you come back and refresh over here, it's all synced up. And that's one of the really powerful aspects of Limble and being cloud-based is all of your data, whether it's on your desktop or mobile application or wherever, is all synced together. So as work is being completed by your technicians out on the floor, it, um, and when you go to the desktop and view it there, it's the same data. Now, uh, the next thing we want to do is show starting new work. So let's say um, the, the technician saw a spill on the floor. So the technician, again, from this mobile app, can go ahead and click report a problem and then say spill near the floor main lobby or wherever. He can attach a picture if he wants and then even mark a severity. And in this case, since it's not a particular type of asset or piece of equipment, we'll go ahead and just throw it on a general asset. Now, once that's created, when we refresh the data here, sure enough, there's that problem report. And since that was assigned by default to the technician, the te or, I'm sorry, the manager, they would have received a push notification and email alert as well. That manager can either from his phone or from uh, or go to a desktop, go look at that problem report, and then take the appropriate action. In this case, the manager will want to go ahead and open this up. Here's that information that Todd typed in. Maybe he'll add a comment saying, you know, we need to do this right away. Or maybe he'll just change this to a higher priority because it's spill and it needs to be done right away. And now you can see who has what work and it looks like the technician team doesn't have anything so let's drag and drop it up there. Again, because it's changed assignment, the, technicians, the technician team would now have received a push notification saying, hey, there's a new piece of work. Additionally, it's a high uh, priority piece of work. You need to get to it right away. The technicians would then be able to see that on their phone 
again, come over here, my tasks, there's that problem report, the high priority, they go and actually complete that work. Same thing we did before. Now let's say that you're a manager and you receive a call, someone saying that, hey, on this mixer, that's making weird noises. In that case, what you're probably gonna wanna do is either start a work order from your phone, or if you're at a desk, go ahead and come in here, click start a work order, choose the assets that having the problem. The person that called in said it's their mixer and you know that person's name is Joe and he works on mixer 001. Or let's say he works on 102. He says, uh, making weird noises, and I'm going to want Todd to go ahead and investigate and repair. I'll go ahead and give it to Todd, click start, and now it's assigned to Todd. Now again, he gets that notification. Again, it's all about making everyone automatically communicate so that they know what's going on throughout your entire operation. So over here on Todd's screen on his phone, he can see there's that making weird noises. You can click in here and goes over to the mixer uh, and immediately say say he goes over the mixer and he wants to pull up the asset information to see what happened last time it broke. You can actually click this green text here, go into the assets log and see that, okay, well, it looks like there were, the drive motor was making weird noises just earlier today that was completed. Obviously the work he did earlier didn't fix the problem because it's still making noises. So now he comes back in. So say, all right, he's investigated it and he fixes it. Now he'll leave a comment. Thought I had it fixed last time. Forgot to do, uh, forgot to tighten something. Click submit and then go ahead and mark this off. Now let's say it took him two hours to track down, well, one hour to track down that issue and it caused another two hours of downtime. So now that's all documented. Again, it automatically pops out of his list to do, and it automatically syncs over here. And then additionally, when you look at the mixer, it automatically logs it. So here's those two things, the one from a previous tutorial and the second one saying, hey, here's another, another work order because the first one didn't get fixed. The first uh, repair didn't actually fully fix it. So as you can see, Limo is designed to be really mobile and very, very friendly to be able to coordinate work between technicians, managers, report problems, and so forth. And what's great about this page as well is you, it's not just that you can manage the work that you currently have open. You can actually click into the calendar and see all upcoming work and view this in a calendar form. So not only do you see that weekly PM that's open, but you can see the upcoming weekly PMs. And to show you a little bit better, let's go to next month. You can see that we have weekly PMs for the mixers on Wednesday and Thursday every single week. Additionally, we have these quarterly PMs for the HJACs. Now, one really powerful functionality here is you can actually search or filter this down. Say we only wanted to find for mixer uh, zero, zero, well, that's for all the mixers. So that you can see automatically filters down just to mixer work. Or maybe you want to see only quarterly PMs. You just start typing it in, and sure enough, there's the quarterly PMs. There's a lot of power in that func search functionality there. Additionally, this calendar can drag and drop. So let's say April 2nd is a holiday. We don't want any work to occur on that day. Simply drag and drop it over. There's a lot of power in this calendar view, and it's really designed to make your life easier as you're managing work when you're having, you know, potentially hundreds of work orders. And that basically covers work order management. There's a lot of ways to start work, whether it's from here or the mobile application or through a work request portal, which we'll go over in a different tutorial. But all of that flows into here, which then allows you to assign it to the right person, check the details, um, and do a lot of great stuff to make your life easier. So if you have any questions about this tutorial, please feel free to give us an email at mel at limblecmms.com or you can contact your dedicated CMMS advisor, or of course you can leave a comment in the section below and we'll try and answer that as quickly as possible. Um, thank you for taking the time to watch this tutorial and have a great day.